All right, welcome back to the channel. We have another box with my favorite label on it. This is a DC house 48 volt LiFePo 4 lithium iron phosphate battery. It is a 50 amp hour, so a little bit smaller, but uh, we actually are gonna be installing two of these on the solar system. We're gonna get rid of the 12 volts and move into 48 volts. It's just the way to go. That way I don't have to balance my 12 volts, and I've been seeing they get a little off balance even though I have a balancer on them. And uh, if I deplete them all the way, essentially one of them ends up failing and then it kills the whole circuit it turns off the inverter so what i really want to do is get everything switched over to 48 volts that way i don't have the problem where one battery gets lower than the rest and kills the whole system we're going to run them all in parallel it's going to be awesome so let's tackle that All right, so this thing is freaking heavy. We got some instructions, cool. Some safety, let's get over to the specs. We all know it's very dangerous to use these. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. So it actually is generic because it's saying you can run these in parallel and series. I, I doubt, I, I doubt that, yeah, no. No, no, no. Okay, so the instructions are completely trash. Let's see what this is. Ah, here. So this is the spec guide. That's just some general guidelines for lithium. So it's gonna be a 50 amp hour. It's rated voltage is 51.2 volts. Uh, the operation voltage is between 40 and 58.4 volts. You can charge it at 25 amps discharge at 50 amps peak is 200 for 10 seconds so that's what we're going to be shooting for 50 amps this is a 4p 1s so it says you can hook four of these up in parallel and not in only one in series so it could just stay 48 volts so this actually does look pretty good metal case it does not want you to charge over 32 Fahrenheit or zero degrees Celsius. So it does not have any type of, um, you know, protection against cold temperatures. So do think about that. Uh, if you're using 80% of the capacity, it has 4,000 life cycles. So that's awesome. All right, what else we got? Some terminal covers and terminal screws and a little QC certificate. Nice, nice foam packing. Ooh, that's very nice. Oh, and oh no, my light. Ah! And here, here she is. This is the third time I've dropped my light. So here we go. This is the DC house lithium iron phosphate battery. Got two terminals. Some of these rack mount batteries or similar style to this have four terminals and that way you can run them in parallel uh, from one to the other. But what I'm gonna be doing is running these to a bus bar so that all of them are run equally with the same amount of copper. And we also have some instructions. Please use a wrench to tighten the screws. Da, 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 da. It says, if crocodile clip is used, clamp it on proper terminal, not directly on the stainless steel screw. Uh, otherwise it will damage the battery. Okay. Cool. And we got the specs and the data sheet written on the battery. I like when they do that. That way, when I lose this piece of paper, I can refer to the box and get uh, all the information I need. But this is standard. This is gonna match up nicely with my other 48 volt, 51 volt uh, batteries in my solar system. So let's give her a charge. 
All right, first, let's check the voltage of this bad boy. Make sure we don't have any issues. Cool, so 52 volts. That actually is on the, uh, the higher side of the charge, which is nice. That way I don't have to put so much of my solar energy into it to charge her up. All right, charger is kicking. So let's come back when this is uh, fully charged. Okay, it is the next morning and we are all charged. So I ended up just charging one of these with my solar battery bank. Um, and that way to run a discharge test, I'm gonna charge back the solar battery bank. So not a lot of energy is lost. And how we're gonna do that is we got a 2000 watt 48 volt inverter. I'm gonna hook that up to this and then I'm gonna power up a charger over there and charge up the big battery bank. So let's do it. All right, I highly recommend you connect your inverter first. That way you're not left with wires connected to the battery that can short out. So let's get this guy connected up. Ooh. Okay, see how I got that little spark? That's to charge up this inverter. Now this inverter isn't actually that big, but I forgot to use my resistor. So this will actually charge the capacitors up without creating that spark because it'll limit the amount of current going through here. So after about 10 seconds or so, that capacitor will be charged up and I shouldn't get a spark. Yeah, perfect. All right, keep that connection there. Let's turn her on. Hey, hey, this is a really nice inverter. I'll have a link in the description of this bad boy, but uh, 2000 watt pure sine wave. Make sure you get a pure sine wave, otherwise you'll start ruining your electronics and sensitive uh, equipment that you're gonna plug into this. So, all right, tells us everything we got. And let's go ahead and connect our charger up. <laughs> So this is going over to the charger to the big battery bank. Plug it in there. And then I'm gonna plug in the charger into the battery. Ah, <laughs> just kidding, just kidding. We gotta hook the shunt up. And I knew this wire was short for a reason. Let's hook the shunt up and that will allow us to monitor the energy coming out of this battery and tell us the capacity. All right, let's go ahead and clear this bad boy out. So, shunt. This is gonna monitor the energy going into this inverter. This inverter is gonna charge our battery bank over there. Let's power her on and we should, see, yep, we got a little bit of drain on here. About two watts of power, 1.6 watts, just for idle consumption on this guy. All right, now I'm gonna walk over there and Plug the charger in. All right, so now we're running a six amp charger over there to charge these batteries up. It's saying it's drawing about 600 watts, 500, yep, 600 watts, 597. And over here it's saying it's drawing about 426 watts. So not sure why there's a discrepancy there, but I do know these shunts are very accurate. So we're gonna go off of this guy. I've never really seen these be very accurate on them. They're always kind of overcompensating. So, perfect. Um, and while we wait, we're gonna use this discharge tester to test this big 72 volt battery that I just got from China for our razors and our e-bikes. So subscribe and check out that video as soon as it's done. This is gonna be awesome. So let's give it a few hours and we'll check back in. Check it out, guys. All right, our voltage is dropping pretty quickly. 
we're kind of at the last tail end of the curve here we're past 40 well past 48 volts so look at this 2694 watt hours and counting and this is supposed to be a 2560 watt hour battery so that is great these are high quality cells your first bunch of cycles these should actually test higher than the rating uh, and then of course as time goes on it kind of wears down the cells a little bit but these are high quality nicely balanced cells i am very excited these tested very similar to the eco worthies that we tested check out that video if you haven't seen it but uh wow 699 dollars for two that is literally if you include shipping half the price of the eg4 series uh, batteries now obviously you need to have two of these instead of one 100 amp hour eg4 but hey i'm fine with that for half the price i'd rather have double the uh the capacity oh there it is all right 2702 watt hours that is amazing and it's about to die all right cool we're gonna put this back on charge and we're gonna connect it to the solar system yes all right it is a disaster in the garage we are disconnecting all these 12 volt batteries and all this copper to connect them all together and we also added a load panel which allows this to charge from the grid when I want it to. And we also added another breaker in here and it's running an attic fan that's gonna be running when the sun is uh, heating up the attic. So we'll use some of that solar power to cool the attic space, which should cool the house. All right, so here's another 50 amp 48 volt. That is the Eco Worthy, which has been awesome. And then we're gonna add the two DC houses and we're gonna stack them here. And based on my calculations and based on how these weren't really equalizing very well, I'm thinking three of these is gonna run my whole system, which is three refrigerators and sometimes the AC in the garage if I want to, if we got a lot of sun. And uh, yeah, so let's do it. All right, now for the fun part. Let's take the cover off of this DC house and this Eco-worthy, and I'll show you the guts and see if there's any differences. First impression is they're almost exactly the same. Uh, this got this yellow, Kind of cover on here you have the bms things look very similar on both ends let's take these covers off oh yeah very nice very nice cool come on don't break on me i think yeah okay this looks beautiful nice wire management Everything looks solid, is tight and secure. Even got some gobbly goop where they need it. The wires have thermal uh, fiber on them to shield them. And I did crack off some of the terminals. They are welded, so nice, really solid job. Now this won't be serviceable or not easily serviceable. Uh, but again, these are cells that can be charged 5,000 times. So I don't really think we're gonna be servicing them. Uh, not at least not for a while, but you can replace these if you need to. This is a lot easier than most uh, setups, especially with pouch cells. So let's check out the Eco-Worthy. It looks exactly the same. And just so you guys know, I was checking out the specifications guide and 
The DC House Spec Guide has the website of ecoworthy.com at the bottom. So these, in fact, are the same manufacturer, just a different model per se. But either way, these, again, tested higher their, than their capacity. I've been running this for a few months. It's been awesome, which is why I jumped on these. They're exactly the same size. They line up perfectly and have the same spec, so we can run these in parallel all day long. All right, let's put these back together. All right, that's it for this video. I love these batteries. It's gonna be great just having 48 volt batteries and not having 12 volt batteries in series that I have to constantly monitor and balance. And sometimes they were even getting off balance because you're putting a lot of energy into these things and pulling a lot of energy out. And those balancers kind of just, you know, trickle charge and balance. Um, so these will be great for the new solar setup. I'm gonna be, of course, adding to this bank um, with these, I just add in parallel and it keeps things nice and simple. And we just add it over to the bus bar there. And of course, don't forget to like and subscribe if this was helpful. If you have any questions about this stuff, let me know below and uh, I'll be sure to answer it. And uh, also check the description for uh, the Amazon links for this and I appreciate you guys' support. Talk to you guys on the next one.